Hello, comrades. Здравствуйте, товарищи. Ушанка Шоу is back in the house, and it means we're gonna learn something new about life in the Soviet Union. In today's video, I'll tell you about different tools and methods that Soviet parents used to discipline their children, and of course, as always, I'll share some of my own personal experience. But before I begin, I would like to apologize to all those 18-year-old students that study the Soviet Union in the colleges, because some of the information I'll provide today may not match what you found in the books. I'm very, very sorry. I also have a bad feeling that YouTube will block comments for this video. It's already happened before when I made a video about school lunches in the Soviet Union, just because there are pictures of school children in the video, YouTube, just in case, blocks the comments. So I apologize in advance, there's a possibility there'll be no comments, and probably I won't get this video monetized. So the mildest form of punishing a kid who didn't listen or did something naughty will be putting him in the corner facing the wall. So that'll be like grounding or giving him a timeout, and of course, based on how bad was his actions or her actions, it could be 10 minutes, uh, otherwise it could be even an hour. You just stay in the corner without saying a word. So, поставить в угол. And it looks like it was a popular form of punishing children, this timeouts in the corners, because there's plenty of art depicting children standing in the corners. Some parents in the villages could make this time out more painful if kid deserved in their opinion. You put your kid in the corner on his knees and you spread some buckwheat on the floor. So you have hardwood floors of course or you know wooden boards with the buckwheat and when you stand on your knees on the buckwheat it's extremely painful. I never heard any one of my friends being punished like that, but we generally heard stories about standing on your knees on the buckwheat. Another way to punish a kid for doing something naughty was nadrat uši. So, hard to translate into English, but you basically grab a kid by the ear and start yanking it till it's, it hurts, turns red. And also there was the way to move a kid. So, for example, you caught a kid doing something naughty and you want to bring him to their parents and explain what he was doing. So you just grab the kid by the ear and you walk him to the apartment and you present him to the parents and say, hey, this kid broke the window or this kid uh, scratched my car or something like that. So, nadrat uši. A popular way to teach a kid to stop using bad words would be slap him on the mouth. So that's dat uh, pagubam, the expression. So you slap him on the lips. So it's usually when a kid is dropping F-bombs, let's say that way, you can uh, get slapped on your lips. Some parents uh, taught their children table manners with the spoon. So if the kid is smacking his lips too loud, there'll be a spoon slapping on the lips. And uh, my parents never done it to me. But one time I was eating lunch uh, with my friend at his place. And I guess I was smacking my lips without realizing that because he looked at me and said, Man, if my dad will be sitting right here with us, he would slap your lips with a spoon. You smacking so loud. And that's how I learned it. And I just remember, I actually have a picture I took. So that was a slide I took in the village. So this is during uh, dinner. And it looks like my mom is about to smack my brother on his lips. I'm not sure what was that about. I don't think he was smacking his lips. It was for something else. Another form of mild punishment was dać podzatilnik. So that's you do a slap on the back of a head. So that would usually be if like you did something really stupid and your parents just kind of does that. My parents never done it to me, but it was known, this expression, dać pod zatilnik. Another option was dać parukam, so that's slap a kid's hands. If he did something naughty with his hands, he was, he broke something or, anyways, anything was done with hands, you can get slapped on your hands, dać parukam, and it could be done with parent hand, or he could use maybe a ruler, this is what my mom did. When I went to school back in 1978, uh, we've still been using fountain pens, so ink pens, and uh, my teacher requested my mom uh, to help her to switch me from left hand, because I was always lefty, to write with the right hand, so that's what my mom did every evening 
while I was doing homework, she'll be sitting next to me with the ruler, and any time I'll try to switch pen from my right hand to left hand, she will gently, sometimes not that gently, will uh, smack my left hand to force me to put pen back in the right hand, and that's how I learned to write with my right hand, and um, this is how I <laughs> learned. And I just want to add really quickly, I'm actually very happy that my mother did that to me, because in my case, on the long run, I'm so thankful, because I feel bad when I see people, how they, you know, move their left hand trying to write, it just looks so wrong, and I'm just writing, I have a really nice handwriting with my right hand, I still can write with my left hand, there's the word that I can think of right now, so I can do with my both hands, writing and drawing, and actually back in the high school, I used to show off, I'll stay right in the middle of the blackboard, and I'll write on the blackboard, starting with my left hand, you know, using the chalk, and then I'll switch to my uh, right hand, so I'll be just standing in the middle and just switching hands, and it was always a nice show off. And before we start talking about spanking, I want to share another story from my uh, <laughs> Soviet childhood. I think I already mentioned it once, so when I was in the village with my grandparents, you know, they had a garden, and there was one area where the cucumbers grew, and I helped my grandma quite often to pick cucumbers, and one time I went by myself, and I noticed there was a quite a few, like, yellow or almost brown cucumbers so i thought my grandma forgot uh, or she failed to find them so i picked them all i didn't realize my grandma kept some to get ripe so she can use them for the seeds for the next year so when i brought to my grandma all proud like look grandma i picked all these cucumbers for you uh, she got very angry she explained me what i did and she told me i'll have to eat those cucumbers now and you know when a cucumber is overripe he doesn't it doesn't taste really good so I remember sitting in my little, I had like a little cabin, little box that I played a lot. And I was sitting there eating, choking on those cucumbers and crying. So that was pretty uh, cruel punishment. But I, I never, ever um, harvested those uh, overripe cucumbers anymore in my life. And of course, Soviet parents did a lot of spanking of their children. My family wasn't exceptional. Though my father spanked me only once when I was very little. I don't remember that spanking because I was maybe like four, maybe five, but he was on the way home, walking the building, and we at that time lived in the dorms, so we lived on the fourth floor, and me and other children were sliding on the rails. So from the fourth floor, sliding down, it was a lot of fun, very fast, but there was open in the middle, so if you lose your grip, you'll fall to your death, you know, four floors, it's pretty high, and my get, dad got so horrified that he snatched me off the rails and he whooped my ass just once but so hard that my mom said my uh, butt had a print of his hand for several days that was the only time when my father spanked me so otherwise it was up to my mom to do the spanking and she did plenty of that although i was pretty good kid so i had to do something very naughty to deserve spanking and there were of course several levels of spanking so the easiest one is by hand while you still have your pants on the next level, you have to pull your pants and underwear down, and then you get slapped on your naked butt, so that's way more painful. Then, of course, if such punishment doesn't work, then you get another upgrade. Now you get spanked with the belt, and once again, you can be wearing your pants or have naked butt, which is extremely painful. And, of course, the worst would be when your parent is so angry that they switch the belt and they use the buckle. We call it бляха, so получить бляха и попопе, that was the worst, because, you know, depending how hard they hit, but it would be very, very painful, and we're going to leave marks. If you follow my channel, you know that I grew up in Kiev, capital of Ukraine, so I always lived in, um, you know, tall apartment buildings, except when we lived in dorms, so nine-story high apartments, plenty of kids outside, so it was quite common that, for example, if a kid did something really naughty, like, for example, he will push the girl and she will scratch her knees for no reason. The parent could also, if he will catch that kid doing that bad stuff, he could spank the kids, even not being uh, the kid's parent. So that didn't happen often, but it happened quite a few times, as I recall. I know some of you may don't believe, but I remember clearly a couple of spankings that my mom did to me. One I remembered because... 
you know, when we lived in the old apartment in the Kistinka, so there was one uh, room, small apartment, and we had a mirror inside of a, we call it buffet, so there's like cabinet with the mirror, and that's where you put your dishes and uh, glassware. So I'm standing, my mom spanking me, and I could tell, you know, I could see her face reflected in that mirror, and I saw that she was crying. So she was punishing me for doing something, but she also felt bad for me. So she had tears in her eyes while spanking my butt. So that's one time that I just kind of remember that really good. And another time it happened at the same spot <laughs> with the same mirror. But so my mom was spanking me with her hand. And I was already older, so it really didn't hurt. So I was standing and grinning. And she looked in the mirror, and she saw a reflection of my smile, and she's like, oh, I think we need to get an upgrade. And she went for the belt, and she finished uh, spanking with her belt. And I was so mad at myself because I betrayed, my grin betrayed me. So that was the day when I uh, got upgrade from hand spanking to belt spanking. And just to give the example what the kid could do that bad that parents will decide to spank him really hard even using a belt. One time, I don't know why, I decided it could be fun to burn matches in our little living room. I mean, we had just one room, so there was living room and the bedroom and everything else. So I burned some matches and then I decided that'll be kind of fun to burn a newspaper on the top of our table. So I laid a newspaper on the table in the middle of the room and lit it on fire, watched it burning. And I wasn't smart enough to collect all the ashes and the burned matches and take it outside and throw it in the trash. So I kind of hid it. It was dumb. But anyways, my mom found it. And then I was lying about it. So she really got mad. So that's when I really got spanked good. And when I was getting ready for this video, putting information together, I was thinking and realized, you know, most Soviet parents really didn't have a lot of interaction time with their children because the way our lifestyle was. I went to school six days a week, so including Saturdays, my parents had, you know, weekend off, so Saturday I was gone half of a day. So we were together as a family only on Sundays or during the vacation. And then, of course, Parents had to work full time, both parents, so we were latchkey kids. So you come home around 2 p.m. after school, you know, lock the door, eat lunch, do homework. So you don't see your parents till like 5 30, 6 p.m. And then in the evening, they tired, you know, so there was not much interaction. Uh, you know, something maybe you can work with your kid differently way than just spanking him when he did something naughty. So I think maybe that's one of the ways we can. One of the reasons why there was uh, so much spanking going on in the Soviet families. But if you're interested of learning how to raise children, I won't say Soviet way, but kind of like Soviet socialist way, but proper way without spanking, I'll provide the link below in the comment section. Uh, it's about Anton Makarenka. So his method was kind of popular even in the West back during like 1930s and 40s. He had like a colony of uh, children that had no parents and he was uh, working these different strategies how to raise children using games and teach them to interact in the groups and stuff like that so that'll be in the link below okay my friends it's all I have for you today thank you for watching Oshanka show you can always support my work with your likes with your subscriptions with your memberships and a patreon you can always buy my book american diaries 1995 and coming soon american diaries 1996 Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.